So this is a first part of a multi-part series of Davis Homes Design Trends. Again, we are owned by Lisa, or joined by Lisa, who is the owner of Sort Support, a professional organizing company located in Carmel. Again, my name is Brooke Satori. I have been in new home sales for approximately 15 years. First, where we build for Davis Homes. So as you can see on our map, we build in a 50 mile radius of Monument Circle. We build on your lots as well as in communities. And this just gives a visual of our home building radius. Our price points range between 200,000 to a million. Some clients may ask why new home construction? First and foremost, you're able to build the exact home you want. We welcome you to modify and personalize the home based off of how you live. You won't need to find contractors to do renovations or updates. Everything in your home is brand new. It's what you've picked, what you've designed, what you've colored, and everything is under warranty. And also new homes will save you significantly on your HVAC and utility bills because they have been built under the newest energy codes. When you build with us, we have sets of floor plans that you can build, or we welcome your own custom plans based off of how we can help you best meet your investment goal and overall budget. We have a great variety of floor plans, both one level and two story homes. And we just wanted to give you a glimpse at some of our fan favorites. First is our Bradbury floor plan. It is a three bedroom, two bath, one level. It can be built with a basement, a crawl space, or a bonus room. The starting square footage is 2,202 square feet. This is also our on your lot sales model located in Fishers. And we have open browse hours every Saturday from 11 a.m. to 2. And our most popular two-story plan is our Manchester. It is a five-bedroom, two-and-a-half bath floor plan. Very open concept with a lot of structural diversity that we can do to achieve your goals. And it starts at 2,770 square feet. For additional information about our homes and our on your lot or community process, we just wanted to give you our website at www.davishomes.com and our contact information at 317-548-HOME. Building on your lot is comprised of three different facets. First is we are going to find you the home plan that fits your lifestyle. We can assist you with finding a home site or build on your land, on the golf course of your dreams, on the water or in the woods. And then we have our site costs, which are ultimately the development costs to get the land ready to accept a home. That is gonna constitute everything from concrete, utilities, removal of dirt, landscaping, and permitting fees based off the municipality that we build in for you. The benefits of us, again, are we are able to customize and modify your home plan. We can help you with the land selection. We come out and we give you a free site cost analysis. And we have a group of lenders that can assist with construction to perm financing. This is our 13 part chart of how each step in the process works from our initial consultation to when we hand you over the keys. This is available in a PDF form. And if you'd like, my contact information will be coming up on a future slide. You can send me an email or a text and I can send you additional information about the Davis on your lot process. This chart is just a reference tool of all of the different financing options that you have for a new home. Everything from a construction to perm loan to traditional USDA loans, conventional loans, and jumbo loans, and what the loan max 
and minimum credit score and initial investment are. Our buying process is as simple as one, two, three. We will determine your budget. We will help you select a location on your lot or within a neighborhood. We will choose the home site. We'll select the floor plan. We'll personalize and modify it based off the interior and exterior finishes that you would like. We will build your home and then you will move in and we will provide you your keys. Who is Davis Homes? We're a locally and family owned and operated on your lot builder. We provide value, quality, customization, simplicity, guarantees, and warranties. Again, for any questions, feel free to call, contact me via email, phone, or text, and make sure to follow us on Instagram. I am now going to introduce Lisa with Sort Support, what you've all been waiting for, and she is going to give us education on home organization and how she can help sort it for you. Welcome, Lisa, and thank you for joining us. Thanks, Brooke, and thank you, Davis Homes, for having me. I'm so glad to be here. Uh, this is very much of a open conversation. So as I am going through things, feel free to unmute yourself. Um, I believe someone else is watching the chat, so they can also uh, interrupt me, and we'll save questions for time at the end, too. Okay, so who am I? I am Lisa Eckerly. I started SWORD support in November of 2019. So I know, great timing, right? But uh, as anyone who drove by a Goodwill during 2020 and 2021, uh, everyone got very motivated to declutter and organize their homes. So it has actually been a great time to start this company. So how I am different than some home organizers is I feel it's very important for an organized space to really exude, exude beauty, pride, and purpose for you and your home. So it's not just a matter of throwing stuff in a basket, a bin, calling it a day, taking a cardboard box, wrapping it in uh, wrapping paper and saying, this looks great. I really get to know my clients for their individual style. I want their organizing to really um, talk about their personality, their lifestyle. It has to actually function for them or else it, it won't last. And then also their home's decor style because I want it to look like it's really a piece of the decor and not just um, kind of a separate area. So I really help busy families, busy moms a lot uh, get organized because a lot of people say, I like organizing. I just don't have the time to do it. Well, that's why I have a job. I take the time for you to do it. So my work has been featured nationally by Creighton Kids. I'll share the playroom later that um, they had on their Instagram feed. It's pretty exciting. Redfin, and then just most recently, Design, which is a huge organizing company in the industry. Um, I have a seven-year-old girl, a four-year-old boy, a husband. I won't give his age. I live in Carmel, and we really enjoy the wine life. We just uh, filled up our wine closet downstairs, so that was, you know, life goal. Okay, so what we're going to go through today, I'm going to teach you how to declutter. I'm going to give you some tips and tricks of how to organize, and then I will share my favorite products with you that really can be used anywhere in your house. So how to declutter. So your body takes cues from its environment, and a lot of the times this is subliminal. So you may think that pile of papers in the back of my office doesn't bother me. It bothers your brain. You don't really realize it. Um, if you tackle it and take care of it, you'll be amazed how much more work you can get done, how much uh, more productive you are, you're focused. It's kind of crazy how it works because when you're surrounded by clutter in whatever form that is, your brain constantly is going through a to-do list. So even while you're just trying to lay on your couch at the end of an evening, when the kids finally go to bed, um, you're still not even really able to completely relax if there is stuff all over your living room. So that's why it's so important to declutter. So I'm going to teach you what to toss and you are going to toss your crap. What does that stand for besides just crap? So you are going to toss stuff if it is C, cheap, repetitive, aggravating, 
or past its prime. So I will quickly go through each of these areas to give you an example of what this is. Because a lot of times when we go through decluttering stuff, um, people are like, well, I, I kind of know what I want to keep. That's easy. Everything. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not a lot. So um, this helps you really think through things of, I probably should get rid of this. And when is a great time to do this is when you're selling your home. So if you are looking to get your home on the market, uh, you're building a new Davis home house. This is a great thing to go through because you don't want to move the stuff that you don't need because it takes more time to do that and it takes a lot more money to pay movers to move stuff that isn't even important to you anymore. So here we go, the cheap stuff. This is stuff made of bad material. It's a sweater that has been itching you since 1988 and you need to just depart with it. Um, sample and free items and promotional items. Uh, for you Friends fans out there, this is the area to not be Ross Geller when he goes into all of the hotels and takes all of the free toiletries. Leave them there, please. Um, the next hotel you stay at will probably have the same ones or, you know, ones that you can use. Promotional items. It's really funny when I do in-person uh, speaking engagements because they're like, oh, bring, you know, any tchotchke you want. No, I don't, I don't want to see people throw away sword support stuff because you shouldn't keep that stuff anyway. Uh, fake looking items. This is like your plants that really look like fake plants and you know they're shiny and stuff. And then this last one is anything that you can replace under a certain price point. So I'll explain this a little bit more in detail. So the client gets to decide what this price point is. It can be anything, but a lot of people are holding on to, I'll give an example. So my client had like 15 little American flags that um, they lined their driveway with one 4th of July. They hadn't used it in 10 years, but they wanted to have another 4th of July party like that. Great. How much did these, I don't know how many she had, American flags cost you? Are you willing to pay that price again, 11 years down the road to replace them instead of paying paying um, your, your, your storing cost of that for 11 years. So that's something that you need to consider individually. R, it's your repetitive stuff. How much do you need of one item? Kitchen utensils is a huge thing of this. When I go through someone's kitchen, I'm literally sorting by utensil. So here are three wooden spoons. Here are four um, slotted spoons. Here are eight tongs. How many of these do you really need? I always ask clients, like, how many pots can you stir at one time to need all of those spoons? So it's a matter of how often do you wash or run your dishwasher? How many people are you um, cooking for on a regular basis? That kind of stuff. Charging cords is a huge thing. People are always buying new charging cords because they thought they lost theirs. It's just a matter of knowing where you put it and put it in that same place every time. Clothing of the same kind and color. So when I go through someone's closet, it's not always just here are all your t-shirts. Here are your red t-shirts. Here are all of your Ball State t-shirts. Here are all of your um, beer t-shirts. How many of those in each category, subcategory, do you really need and wear? Water bottles is a huge thing. Um, I love playing the matching game of all the lids on water bottles to realize that you have like four water bottles without a lid or eight lids without a water bottle. That's another repetitive thing. How many do does your individual family actually need? Um, pens and pencils, do they even work? I always go through and test those for people, especially markers in a kid's zone. Um, pillows and wine glasses. Here's my biggest thing. Go to every winery, taste every wine, leave the wine glass there, please. Okay, stuff that is aggravating. Clothes that don't fit. You will lose that weight. I am being your biggest cheerleader on that. But when you lose the weight, you probably want to celebrate by buying yourself some new clothes. Don't hang on to them. Items that are always in the way, if you're constantly having to move something in a cabinet to get to the thing behind it, but you're never using the thing in front, Take that as a sign. Decor that doesn't fit your style. Anything from a previous relationship. 
Um, I went through a house with a client. She was a divorcee. Um, we kept coming across things that she was like, I got that for, from my first wedding. And every time she made a face, okay, get rid of it. Or I got that from um, a friend of mine that, at, you know, we've parted ways. We had a falling out. I don't even like her. Well, every time you see this object, it reminds you of her. So just get rid of it. A project that you'll get to one day. I make project piles for clients and give them a deadline. Here's a project pile. If you don't deal with the stuff in this project pile by, you know, we make up the deadline. Three months from now, get rid of it. Or pay someone to finish it for you. Um, bad smelling perfume candles, you know, all that stuff that just annoys you. I guess A could also be for annoying. Okay, past this brand. This is the stuff that is just, it's rusted, it's broken, it has holes in it, it's pilled, it's um, stretched out, it's expired. I go through everyone's um, spices and medicine cabinet and everything in a pantry and look at the expiration dates. And that's our first go around of what needs to come out. Um, missing pieces. I literally have sat down before in a playroom and put together a puzzle just to make sure all the pieces were there and that the pieces in the box were for that particular puzzle. If the pieces are missing and we've gone through the whole room and it just hasn't showed up and it hasn't showed up in months, it's not going to just magically appear. I know it's really frustrating for a kid. So that's another thing you just get rid of. And things that are slow. This is technology stuff. If it just doesn't work anymore and doesn't keep up with the demands of technology today, recycle it. Okay, here's my gift to you guys. <laughs> if something is gifted to you, it does not mean that you have to keep it. If it just doesn't work for you, it doesn't work for your lifestyle, it's not your style. It, it the, the gift was it being given to you. If you have to manage that piece or that item for <laughs> the rest of your life, it's no longer a gift. So if you manage it instead of enjoy it, just depart with it without any guilt. Okay, if anybody is brave enough to actually come off of mute and tell me what crap stands for, I will applaud you. If not, I will just give you the answer again. So what does C stand for? Okay, it stands for cheap. R, repetitive. A, aggravating. And P, past its prime. So remember that acronym and you will know exactly what to get rid of your life. Okay, so here are some before and after examples of a really great, um, a, a, a great after <laughs> of um, when stuff was decluttered. So being very truthful here and vulnerable, this was my own laundry room um, when we first moved in and just started shoving stuff. So went through it. Now it is something that I actually want to walk into on a daily basis to do laundry. So this was a great decluttering thing because a lot of those things we either got rid of or relocated or put behind um, these pretty bins and now we know where to find it. Here's another one, a garage. We, all, we I think we can all say that a garage needs to be decluttered. And I will say, yes, this is the same wall. Um, the client had drywall put up and had it painted. So this is literally the same corner of that exact same um, garage. So we went through a ton of things. Yes, there, there is another wall of um, kind of another system, but decluttering can just do so good for the soul. Okay, before we get into tips and tricks, I'll pause for a second and see if anyone has any questions about decluttering. See, there's one in the chat. I don't know what it is. Anybody? Okay, we'll move on. So here are some specific tips and tricks of how to organize. So organizing 101, this is basically what the entire concept is based off of, is just playing like, placing like with like. So your like with like may be different than someone else's. So in an example of that, um, instead of just putting all of your face creams together and then all of your toners together, you are actually putting your daytime or morning skin routine together, and then your nighttime skin routine together in the same place. So you're only going from one place each time instead of 
picking and choosing like six different creams that you put on at night. Um, an appliance garage is one of my favorite things to do like with like, um, even some other examples of international ingredients together. So instead of putting all of your spices together in one area, you're creating a Thai place, um, a Mexican place, an Italian place in your pantry. So when you decide to cook that type of food, you're grabbing one container again, instead of having to go in multiple places. And then a clothing care kit. This is actually something a client came up with that we did in her closet where it had the scotch guard, it had her steamer, it had the water for the steamer, it had her lint brush and something else. Um, but we put all that together and now she knows where to find it for when she has to do something to her clothes. So this is an example of um, an appliance garage that I built that wasn't truly there. She just had these like two appliances in one spot and other appliances were elsewhere. So you can see on the right now, we put like with like because all the appliances together and all of the cans are together, all of the peanut butter is together. So you get the idea. Okay, become a decanting queen. This is uh, sometimes controversial because of TikTok videos where people are going side by side now being like, I don't have time for that. So um, you have time the first time because it's gonna save you time 10 times after that. So get rid of bulky packaging. I will be the first to say, and people never like me saying this, but I uh, do not shop at Costco and I don't like it at all because you come home with giant things that you have to store all at once instead of storing little by little. But it's okay, I work with it all the time. So you're wanting to keep food in airtight containers to keep them fresher longer. And especially stuff that you are accessing on like a daily basis. Cereal is the biggest thing that I love to decant because you don't have to have kids, you know, put down the little plastic bag, deal with the clipper on top of it. It just is easier for everybody. And as a parent, you actually get five seconds back to yourself that, you know, more than that, that you're not cleaning up all the cereal that they spilled and putting the box back, all that stuff. Other great things to um, debox, debox, I think I made that word up, is um, games and puzzles. So the boxes always come apart. You're always losing pieces because they slide through the boxes that have torn, put them in mesh bags. You're able to put way more games and puzzles in an area than what the boxes will, will allow. So less packaging equals more space. So here is an example of that. Um, it didn't get it exactly in this photo, but the client had just a lot of um, Costco type stuff. This is a family of seven. So I'll give them Costco on this one. But we just decanted a whole bunch of stuff, like all those snacks in the middle. Now they don't have to mess with bags for any of those. We did box like the Ritz crackers in the turntable kind of in the middle bottom. So again, the kids just don't have to mess with confusing and time consuming packaging. So now it's just grab and go. Okay, so here's an idea for cords in an office. A lot of people, you know, for good reason, cause it's my, um, just huge clutter, don't like to see cords. So this basket, it's still available at Target. It has been there for years. It's a great way shove everything inside and only one cord has to come out of those big holes that it has, but it looks pretty and still functional. So other ways to do cords, you have cable clips, um, a tabletop USB charging station, cable boxes at the bottom. There are many um, avenues to deal with those. Okay, go vertical. So many people, when you are trying to put stuff away, will go flat with everything. I'm gonna lay everything on a shelf and just keep layering. Well, that makes it impossible to get to the thing in the bottom or even the thing in the middle without stuff falling on your head, without it all you know, falling off to the side, it making a really terrible loud noise. So think vertically as much as you can. Place pots and pans and muffins and sheets, cooking sheets, all of that stuff vertical, get some dividers in there. So when you pull one thing out, that's the only thing that is being, um, messed up, if you will. And then empty wall space. I'm going to show you an example here. So this was like a learning slash kids room, basically. Um, it was her craft room. She, she wanted to become a teacher. So this is where she taught her stuffed animals. 
and don't worry, we kept a space for that. We didn't want to take away her drink, but the mom needed space in here. So, you know, here's all this wall space. And now we went vertical with it, getting all that shelving in there. And it is holding a ton of storage stuff. So that's a way to think vertically. Okay. Bottle your bottles. I, we talked about water bottles previously. This is like becoming the oldest trick in the book for organizers where you actually use these wine holders and um, put the bottles in horizontally. I know I just told you to think vertically, now think horizontally. And um, you can grab one bottle, you can see your options, you can keep the lids with them and you're not toppling over all the other bottles in the way. Labeling, labeling is key. Everybody asks, how do I uh, make this work after you're gone? Without kicking everyone out of your house besides yourself, labeling is that answer. So you can have, you know, labeling is like the, the icing on the cake. It's the fun thing to bring into the organizing project. So think when you're dealing with kids too, words may not work because you're dealing with, you know, three and younger or four and younger, whatever age kids read. So um, you have to put pictures on them. You have to put icons on them. Some people will actually take a picture of what's in the bin and then laminate that or put it in like a laminated label holder and put that on the front. Okay, so here's where we had a little bit of fun of labeling. This was a pantry. A lot of people think this is the after because you know everything's contained. Nothing is labeled. And what you can't see from this picture is that these baskets don't go with the decor of the house in any way, shape, or form. So we up leveled it. So the gold and white is totally her kitchen. And we had fun with the labels um, being really big and bold. So her family has no excuse <laughs> for putting stuff away where it doesn't belong or not being able to find something. Okay, Susan, she's not lazy. After all, I know it's a big aha moment. Um, I love lazy Susans. They are most perfect in corners. So a lot of people have those weird not weird, L-shaped pantries. Um, they don't know what to do in that corner because you can't take a bin out. Things get lost in them. A turntable is your answer. Um, you also want to use these up high on um, shelves where you only have to reach like the front of the shelf instead of trying to reach all the way back because then you can just spin it and know what's on there and perfect for deep shelves as well. Um, one thing to note, don't put too small of items in it, especially if it's up high because they'll get lost in the middle and you won't know that they're there drawer dividers. I love these for so many reasons, but it keeps stuff upright. This is, you know, everybody knows Marie Kondo's, Kondo's file folding system. You can see in the bottom left here, this keeps the categories of those systems um, separated. So you can put more than one thing in a drawer, but know that those are different things. So um, I label like the inside of the drawer so you can't see it, it doesn't hurt the wood, don't worry. But that's like one piece PJs, two piece PJs, um, nightgowns, winter PJs. And then you can see at top is the tubware and stuff. So it keeps stuff staying upright. Again, go vertical with things. Um, they're really great. And they come in different colors and sizes. Can riser. This just makes it a thing of beauty in your pantry. And in all honesty, when I start a pantry, can riser goes in first and then I kind of design around it. So it just helps you see your stock, know what you have, make grocery list making so much quicker. And then you can line up all of the same kinds of things. And it, it, it's art, if you will. And then you can see in this pantry is where I used it. So that was the before there's kind of placing stuff on shelves wherever. Here's where we um, made it actually into categories and that can riser kind of is in the middle right there. Kid-friendly cabinet. So if you have um, kids that wanna help themselves, hopefully teach them how to help themselves too. So you're going to take everything kid related, quit putting plates with your plates, and the cups with your cups and water bottles with your water bottles, take it all down, put it at a level. I usually put it like in a drawer or pull out cabinet and give them 
the freedom to pick out their own things, get ready for dinner, snack time, just send them there. Um, and you may never hear, get me again, at least when it comes to supplies, food, you probably will still have to deal with. But when I did this for my own kids, this is my own drawer. It was like it, Christmas I and mean, they were so excited that they had their own space in the kitchen. And quite frankly, I don't care if they take all this out and play with it on the floor. It can go right back in. Okay, spices. So here are three different ways to do spices. The first bottom left is the turntable. This one is the double tier turntable. If you have room in your pantry for this. Again, watch out, especially for those little spices that you don't put too many in the middle. But this was also lower down that the client could, could see um, at that level. So that's one option. Another one is a riser, just like we did with the can riser. There are smaller ones for um, spice risers. So this is in like an upper cabinet on the bottom shelf. So again, you can kind of see everything just as you would with the cans. My favorite thing to do, however, is um, put them in, put, putting the spices in a drawer. Um, what you can barely see here is you line the drawer with like a silicone um, liner basically. So when you open the drawer, none of those are rolling around. So they just stay in place. And uh, it makes it really convenient because you don't have to relabel anything. You can see all the labels. This is actually in alphabetical order. So um, the key to this, unless you have to put it in your pantry, but for this cabinet and the drawer, it's right next to the stove. So you don't have to move from when you are um, making stuff in your skillet. Okay, this is like the fa most favorite part of my job. It's just getting creative. This is actually a shoe storage cabinet. I recreated it into a craft supply cabinet for um, my client's little daughter, the one that wanted to become a teacher earlier. So don't shop by just department. Like if you want to redo your closet, go in the kitchen area, go in the garage area. Um, you, you just never know what you may find and be able to repurpose. It's a lot of fun. And if you can't do that, that's why I'm here. Okay, so this is kind of a thing that, uh, an area where I repurposed something that technically it wasn't supposed to be made for. The client had this kind of craft room, sort of homework room, but only room for one kid. Well, she has four. One is not at the school age yet. So I remade it into a learning room with spaces for three kids. And those are actual kitchen cabinets. So we made it that it's a little higher. They pull out better than the office ones. Um, and we kind of recreate, even the, the top is meant for a kitchen cabinet. So we recreated it for books. Okay, here are my favorite products. Go out and get these, start organizing. These stackable wooden bins. They are available at Target. Um, basically, if you see them in a pantry, you know, not, you know I have been there <laughs> because I love using these in pantries. They're lightweight. They're big enough that you actually can grab in. Some of these open front bins are like, here's a child hand that can only fit in there. Um, these are great, inexpensive, like I said, lightweight too, and very versatile. By the way, the container store has a version of this. I do not recommend it. Go to Target. Okay, here's a pantry where I used them. So this closet actually was right next to the kitchen. Um, my client wasn't using it as a pantry. She didn't have a pantry anywhere. Her food was kind of all over the place. So we, by decluttering, um, we got rid of a lot of this. We moved it to someplace else and we just made it work and made a brand new pantry for her that she never had before. So you wanna talk about also increasing real estate value before you sell. This, is, this was a whole, thing that she could put in her description that she couldn't put before. So you can see those wooden bins at the bottom. Okay, slim hangers. And I know I have a photo here of uh, velvet hangers. I'm becoming not a fan of velvet hangers, gotta be honest. And I've been pulling a lot of my clients and a lot of them agree with me. A lot of people still love them, but they're hard to get clothes on. They're hard to get clothes off. There are other options now on the market that um, I have been testing as well. But the fact is the slim hangers are the way to go. In this closet that is on here, I actually did an unscientific uh, experiment. 
where I like, took her clothes on like the white plastic hangers, kept them in the same spot, exact same amount of clothes, did um, the slim hangers and saved two inches, literally. And it was, I don't remember how many clothes, but it was um, like a, a portion of it. So take that times like probably five, if not six. And we saved that many inches in the whole closet. And the uniformity of switching out all of your hangers makes it huge for visual clutter too. So here's where um, we switched out the hangers on the left. It's a little, you can see them um, on the right, on the left of the right picture. <laughs> um, just that uniformity, how better it looks. Okay, three tier cart. This can be used in so many places around the house. A lot of people like to use them for crafts. Um, I've created a homework one for a client. So they wheel it out when it's homework time, they wheel it back in the closet when it's not homework time and no one has to think of homework around the kitchen table when you're actually trying to eat. And then the other way um, I've actually used it, again, that's my own, that's a workout station that I put in my basement. So it houses that. I've done it for another client too. She loved it. So these are just so nice because they can be wheeled wherever you need them or put away for when going. Divided turntable. These are great for crafts. I love using them for medicine. You can kind of see on the left, I actually divide each section by like an ailment. So there's pain, there's cough, there's flu, there's boo-boos. Um, so you can easily know what, what, what kind of medicine do I need and where do I find it at 3 a.m. in the morning when your kid is puking. And then drawer organizers. These are just, this is kind of organizing 101 almost too. These are so helpful in just keeping everything straight in your kitchen and knowing what you have and being able to grab it quickly before something burns on the counter. Not on the counter, on the stove. I'm not the cook in the family. Stackable drawers. These are great when you have high um, shelves or tall shelves that may not be adjustable. So you stack these and then you're able to pull stuff out without messing up anything else, without having to move a bin first on top and then get to the bottom. Again, you can divide them, you know, by subcategories. Uh, they are just fantastic. And they actually pull all the way out to the drawers too, if you want to take that stuff elsewhere or like fill it up easier. Okay, so <laughs> I told you this was coming. This is my... Um, Creighton Kids, Creighton Barrel uh, office that I did. So a lot of people feel like this is backwards. Like you had an office, everyone wants a home office. Why would you get rid of it? Well, these two doctors just didn't work at home. They try to keep their work at work. They work long hours there. Um, they wanted a place for the kids on the main level so they could all hang out more together. So we took this office and made it into a playroom. So those are just, um, that's like a kid play mat that we put. So somebody was like, Oh my God, did you ruin those floors? No, we did not. Those just are sitting on there and they come right up when they want it back to an office. Okay. So kind of what it's like to work with me. These are a lot of spaces on one slide. I get that, but this is an example. This is one client and this is not all the spaces I have touched for her. So when she first hired me, I started in the bottom right, her daughter's closet. We just kept going. Her other daughter's closet, her son's closet, her other son's closet, her other daughter's closet, her kitchen, her pantry, her mudroom, her butler's pantry. I've been all over this house. And what is great about it is um, not only is she getting every space organized, but we built a relationship. I get to know my clients on kind of a very personal level. I mean, you think about it. I'm in your I'm in your drawers, people. So um, it helps me to get to know them because then I know how this stuff can function for them without even, you know, having to ask them a million questions each time we go to a new space. And what I also am able to offer is maintenance sessions. So organizing is just like personal training, honestly, and trying to lose weight. If you do it once, doesn't mean it's going to stay. Unfortunately, you know, we live in our homes. So Things are always going to get messed up, but as I was explaining to a new client the other day, it's never going to stay perfect. That's not my goal. That shouldn't be your goal. 
the goal is to have a good enough system that when it's time to clean up, it takes you 10 minutes instead of an entire Saturday. And you're, you're mad and you didn't even get it done. So I then am able to go in for clients. This client, I go back monthly and zhush up all the spaces. And it takes, you know, not that long of time, but that's another ongoing service that I offer for people to just help them reprioritize their own time to spend on their family instead of organizing for their family. Okay, questions. I know the only thing I didn't cover um, is how, how, how it is to work with me. So I do sessions in four hour increments. Um, sometimes those go longer. They're never shorter because even if we get done, people are like, oh, okay, next space. Um, so for one organizer, four hours is $420 and that's all inclusive. So I take care of dropping off donations for you. I take care of shopping for you. I take care of purchasing, designing, space planning, returns, exchanges. What else do I have in there? Communication, <laughs> ongoing communication, all that's included in my in-home pricing. So you don't get um, kind of uh, a little scared at the end. And then if you want two organizers, I just got a new assistant, it's like made my day. Um, a four hour session is 650. So I don't give prices out like a closet usually runs this because it just depends on the contents in the closet, the size of the closet, how quickly you make decisions. Um, there are just many factors that go into that, which we all talk through during my in-home planning meeting at the beginning of each project. Okay, I will take any questions anyone has. Lisa, there's currently nothing in the chat that has come in. Just oh, wanted okay. to go over that. Great. If anybody wants to unmute and ask a question, I'm happy to help. Or if you have a scenario where you need a recommendation, I'm happy with that too. So a question just came in in regards to charging stations for phones, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, I wish I had a picture. I have a picture of it. I can't bring it up real quick. Um, it's kind of in my background too, if you see this white thing back here. So they make um, charging stations. I had literally the family of seven. I found a charging station for 10 um, devices and you could pick and choose which cords you needed because there was a MacBook, there was a phone, iPhone, a Android, a Chromebook, an iPad, a, you know, all of the things. But um, it's just like a tiered thing that sits in one spot. It comes with its own USB plug or inner. And then you only have one cord coming out of it to go into the actual wall. But the USBs stay there. So no one can walk away with them and you lose them. But they just um, sit in this little tiered divider and it's in one spot and everybody knows where to find their device. And if the device is not plugged in there, then you know um, it's a problem. There are a lot of other um, in drawer systems coming out too, where yes, you have to drill a hole in the back of your drawer, but um, it's not too difficult to do that. Another question just came in the chat, which areas or rooms do you recommend to start in? The one that is giving you the most aggravation and or the one that you use most on a daily basis and or <laughs> the smallest one. So if you're someone that easily gets overwhelmed, start with a small um, drawer, start with a small closet that you can get momentum, you can get um, confidence, you can learn what it's like to make those editing decisions and then you'll feel great moving on. That's one way. The other two ways I was talking about, like if every single time you walk into your closet, 
you start the day down because oh, I hate this closet, start there. And the biggest thing, I just told a client this, um, cause she was like, I don't like baby steps. And I was like, well, you have to start in one space and get that one space done before going to the next. So it may be baby steps and getting your whole house done, but it's not baby steps. on just concentrating on that one area. It's the quickest way to get that one area done because that's why most people can get organized in a weekend because they move, they're starting in their kitchen. Oh, this has to go to the laundry room. They take it to the laundry room. Oh, I can't even put it in this cabinet. Now let me organize this cabinet. Oh, wait, where was I in the kitchen? And now you have a mess in two rooms and you got nothing done. When I have clients um, editing stuff and we know stuff has to be relocated to another space, I just have a bin for them. Put it in there. Don't leave me. You're not allowed to leave the room because I'm going to lose you. Come back here. We'll deal with all of the relocation stuff at once after. Is there more in the chat, Bridget? Thought I saw the number. Another one just came in from Stephanie. Do we do you offer services for moving into a new house and the best way to start organizing before things get chaotic? Is it best to buy a bunch of organizational items first and then return what doesn't work? So yes, I help with move-ins. Here's where I'm a little different with other organizers. Um, a, I don't have a huge team. So moving you in on the day of your move in, um, it, I, I'm not going to benefit you if that's exactly what you're looking for. I'll just be completely honest. What I like to do is after you have unpacked, you know, I can help unpack the last few boxes. That's fine because everybody always has those boxes laying around. Um, but after you've mostly unpacked and have lived in the house, even two weeks, that helps me completely because you're getting used to your new space and you are still trying to figure out what makes more sense where I can help you figure that out. But at least by then you have tried and aired some things because I want it to work for you in the long run instead of just trying to hurry up and get in. So yes, I help you move in. Um, like I said, just give it a little bit of time so you can settle and that you're not overwhelmed with everything happening at once. There are so many people in a new house half the time. Uh, what was the second half of that question? Oh, product. Uh, never my product first. Never. It's literally, I think, step four, maybe, in my process. Because you want to categorize everything first. And by the way, if any of you watch the home edit, I'm going against what they say here. They edit first and then categorize. I categorize and then edit because I'm a big believer. You can't really edit until you know what you have in a category. Like if you're editing a wooden spoon and then you realize, oh, that was my only wooden spoon. Uh, that's no good. But I want you to categorize first, edit first. So now we know exactly what we need to contain and then measuring if that could be steps like one through 17, I would make it. You have to measure your space to know what's actually going to fit and which way is it going to fit. If you want the handle in front, you have to make sure that the depth works that way. So um, that is really important. Yes, I will buy extra when I come to a person's house of product and I will return it. That is definitely part of the process, but it's not first. Which is why so many times when I go through people's houses, we're literally editing out organizing bins because they bought them. Oh, they didn't work. I didn't want to return it. I never got back to the store, that kind of thing. Anything else? Well, Lisa, thank you so much for partnering yeah. and joining with Davis Homes today. As you can see on your screen, all of Lisa's contact information, her Facebook and her Insta are up. Again, my contact information is Brooke Satore. My cell phone is 
800-894-2968. Please feel free to reach out to either one of us. We would be happy to assist you in your organizing and new home discovery and dreams. Please look for additional event right events that we will have with professionals to assist you in your new home experience, mortgage experience, and anything else relevant and trending to the housing market. We thank you very much for joining us over this last 50 minutes.